Hi and welcome to this calendar app for Zendesk demo video where we're going to be covering what the calendar app can do, how it can provide transparency amongst your team and for all things planned and save everyone time swivel chairing between Zendesk Office 365 and or Google Calendar. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, installing an app on, into your Zendesk, uh, you can do so by going to zendesk.com slash apps. Uh, do a quick search for Sweethawk and you'll be able to find the calendar app here. Okay, so let's jump in and have a look what the calendar app can do. So we're gonna be looking at things uh, right now from the ag an agent's perspective inside of Zendesk. And you can see that the calendar app uh, sits on the right hand side in the apps pane over here. And if we wanted to create an event, uh, the first thing we can do is choose a calendar that we wanna create the event on. Now, um, you can have as many calendars as you like in Zendesk, and these are set up in the admin settings, but we'll get to that later. Uh, for, for now, I'm just gonna choose a calendar and we can either fill out the details for the event here or just to click to create in the calendar like so, which is going to pop out the calendar pop out screen here uh, and we can drag out an event like so. Now, uh, think about the calendar the, uh, event that you're attaching to the ticket as an extension of Zendesk ticket fields. Um, uh, just like when you change a Zendesk ticket field, you need to submit it to take place on a ticket. This is the same with the calendar event. So I'm just gonna click on submit here and that's gonna create the event on this ticket. Now, another thing you can do is compare uh, events uh, across calendars. So it helps you, uh, uh, you know, know when you should be planning something uh, or if you need to move an event. Um, so we can either uh, go back to the calendar by clicking edit in event in calendar here, or just click on the top bar location here, or we'll be able to see the event that we just created. Um, and uh, yeah, so if I wanted to, I can kind of look at all events across all calendars. Um, oh, well, in this case, we're looking at uh, only three calendars, but if I want to, I can look at, at all calendars to see to make sure that it's not conflicting with anything. But as you just saw, um, I can um, uh, isolate out specific calendars that I want to compare. For example, if I want to just see the Castle Hotels versus, say, development versus, say, uh, support, um, then uh, I can do that as well. So, you know, you can control which calendars are being compared against and then be able to uh, move and, and edit your events as appropriate. So if I was to now move this event here, or maybe we can move it later in the day, you'll see that there's a, um, an actual a dot on the, uh, at the top right hand side of the event, meaning that the event has been edited, but it hasn't been saved in the ticket. So in order to save it, I'll need to go to the actual ticket like so, where I can submit that um, and that, that will save the event. The, um, the icon that you'll usually see on uh, each uh, event is the ticket. I'll just refresh this so you can see that it's now saved. Um, is the ticket icon. Um, so that's uh, meaning that the, um, you know, that the event is attached to a ticket. There is another icon, which we'll get to in a sec when we talk about the integration with uh, Google and Office 365. But yeah, being able to uh, compare your calendars, uh, this um, lo uh, location here, you can resize it depending on uh, you know how much screen real estate you have and um, what you're trying to do outside of the calendar app here. I'll just put it back over here. I can see my time zone here. Um, I can kind of uh, you know reset the scope of what I'm seeing month day, uh, week and day. So that's uh, kind of um, a, a little bit about uh, arranging events and, and the calendar within Zendesk. Um, next, I want to show you how the calendar syncs with Google Calendar and or Office 365. So first up, let's look at uh, Google because this Castle Hotels calendar is actually synced up with this uh, Castle Hotels calendar over in uh, Google Calendar. You can see the event that we created here uh, is um, kind of scheduled for uh, what 7 p.m. Um, and uh, it's a two-way synchronization. So if I was to move this event to uh, kind of move to 2 p.m. today, then back over in Zendesk, we'd be able to see that the event automatically gets moved and I'll be able to see that uh, automatically kind of um, updated on my calendar over here as well. Uh, 
So yeah, um, so syncing. So there's a third way that the calendar syncs. It's not just two way when you create an event or move it in Zendesk, it kind of updates in Google, vice versa. If you move it over there, it updates in, in Zendesk. But what happens if you create an event externally in Google Calendar? Well, it appears differently in uh, Zendesk. Uh, you'll be able to see it doesn't have the ticket icon at the top right hand side here. It's got a little cloud icon. So uh, events that have been pulled in, that have been created externally, they're uh, here as a, an FYI or for transparency so that you know you shouldn't be scheduling something over the top of them. However, you can't move them around. Um, they're just there visually so you know um, what, what else is happening in the scheme of things. Okay, so another thing you can do, if you are linked to, uh, if you have your calendar linked to uh, a Google or Office 365, you'll see that once, when you create the event, about 20 seconds after you create the event and the event does the handshake with Google, um, you, you'll see this button appear to be able to invite attendees. So what that does is it, uh, if I was to click this, for example, it will allow you to uh, add anybody that you want to be invited to the event. Now, it's not going to be invited to the event through Zendesk. It's actually going to invite the attendees through Google Calendar. So uh, if I click in this box here, anybody that's currently on this ticket will be listed. So I can, you know, say, for example, invite the requester or invite uh, Harriet Bergman, who's a, a follower on this ticket. I can do that, but I can also just type out um, an email address if I wanted to, like so. Um, and then when I'm happy, I can just send those invites out. <clears throat> now, like I said, it's not sent out of uh, Zendesk. It is sent out through the um, external calendar. So if we go over to Google Calendar and see here, we can click into the event and we can see that now uh, two uh, guests or two invitees are listed on the thing. Um, and you can see that uh, it's uh, appearing on Harriet's calendar over here to which she'll need to accept. Okay, so let's talk about uh, how to create a calendar in Zendesk. So you've got lots of calendars here, but uh, you know, one thing you know you want to be able to do is to add more. So uh, you can do this by clicking into the calendar admin uh, section here, and uh, the first screen is your listed out calendars. So I can click on to create a new calendar, like so, and we'll call this one the finance uh, calendar. Um, we can set a color for our calendar. We'll make it uh, cyan. Um, and then we, we've got granular access that we can control. So I can say everyone in the business has access to write, or I could say, you know what? Only finance has access to edit and uh, create events on the finance calendar, while everybody else can see events on the finance calendar. Or I can be very specific and uh, set multiple groups or, um, or, or roles, for example, or uh, even in down to the individual if I want to allow specific people to be able to see, uh, sorry, to, to, to have access to uh, write and edit a, a, to a calendar, I can do that as well. So after I've created a calendar, uh, when I go to um, create an event on a ticket, I'll be able to see uh, that that calendar is now one of the options, finance over here. And then uh, the next step is uh, if I wanted to integrate this calendar that I've just created with, you know, Google or Office 365, I can do that. Now we've already, um, I've already shown you the integration with uh, Google Calendar. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you how you can connect up a calendar with Office 365 to show you how easy it is and what happens. So over here, I've got my Office 365 finance calendar um, with a few events on it. Um, and so uh, back over uh, here, uh, we're gonna connect that, that up. So the first thing we do is we need to connect to our Office 365 account. So, because um, you can have obviously multiple uh, calendars, uh, but before we can select a calendar, um, yeah, needs to be connected. So let's just log in here. And then we'll just need to uh, click the yes button 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's going to sync up and now we've got it linked to Office 365. Notice that now that I've uh, linked it to Office 365, we have a new uh, icon next to every calendar that gives us the option of, of syncing up a calendar. And so for finance, for example, we'll be able to say, okay, well, these are the calendars that are, are in my Office 365. I want to link it to finance. No problems. We'll select that. And now it is linked up. So coming back over to this ticket, if I was to, uh, well, let's just go and check the finance calendar over here. We'll be able to see that those three events that I've got uh, existing in my Office 365 calendar have already been pulled in. So that if I was to plan this event for that calendar, then I can do so uh, with those events in mind like so. Okay, um, now the next thing you can do is uh, not only can you create uh, calendars for different departments as you've seen uh, I've done here and, and sync it up to uh, you know different accounts to, to pull in information, but you can have all of your agents syncing up their own personal calendars into uh, Zendesk as well. So, so, you know, from a personal perspective, uh, as an agent, I don't need to swivel chair between Zendesk and Google to know when I should be booking something in with a customer that I'm talking to. So let's switch over to a personal view here. So here we're logged in as Jeff Citizen, who's an agent in Zendesk. Um, and he's gonna wanna book in a, an event uh, with Jane. Um, and here's his calendar. So he's got a few things going on in his calendar. So, you know, he, rather than having to make sure that he's kind of clicking over here, he could essentially just add his own calendar. Now this is an option, you don't have to make it, so, you can make it so that personal calendars is turned off and you don't have to have your agents connecting. But um, if you do have it switched on, when an agent uh, goes to create an event at the bottom here, they'll be able to click add slash edit their own calendars, like so. Um, and then Jeff here will be able to connect his own Google calendar up, <coughs> which will do, so uh, Jeff, or we'll click to allow. And so now he's got his own calendar connected. Now he'll just need to select the calendar that he wants to uh, pop in. So he's gonna choose his personal calendar. This is the name that's going to appear on the calendar. Um, and he has control uh, over the color, uh, whether he wants to show all the details of his events on his personal calendar or just show whether when he's um, busy or not busy and then can click okay like so. So now he's added his uh, calendar. So back over in uh, the app, he can go and say, you know what, I'm gonna create this on my calendar, click on event with all of the other events on his calendar in mind, like so. Um, and then it can submit that. And now over on his personal calendar, he'll be able to see that on the 29th of August, he'll have an event that's created at 2 p.m. Like so, cool. Okay, so um, uh, around kind of <clears throat> depth of integration, uh, the, the calendar app is, you know, it is integrated with other platforms, but it is also integrated nicely with Zendesk. For example, if Jeff here wanted to communicate that he's created an event with his customer, of course he can invite them uh, using this invite button, but he can also use a Zendesk macro to pull the details of the, uh, of the ticket. Because uh, what the calendar app is doing behind the scenes is it's actually storing information in Zendesk ticket fields. And those fields are accessible using placeholders in macros. And I'll show you those fields, which you'll see in the events log here. So um, calendar event link, uh, calendar event name, date, time, uh, time zone, duration, all of those things. So those are all accessible when you're creating your macro. So over here, if I was to to add this macro here, we can see that th these details here are being pulled in as part of that update. Another thing that this feeding of information through to Zendesk Ticket Fields really helps with is reporting. Because maybe you want to know from an admin perspective uh, what uh, 
each agent is doing, how many events they're scheduling or across different departments, how many hours are people spending in reports. So that's something that you can do because it's available through the ticket fields. And so here I, over in Zendesk Explorer, I've created a couple of reports just to show you basically what you can potentially do. Uh, this report here is just um, breaking down the uh, number of hours that each agent has scheduled events over the last few months. Uh, this is another report here that I've created where I'm breaking down the number of, uh, of uh, tickets containing events broken down by group. Um, but yeah, essentially uh, you could really slice and dice this however you want. If you want to know how many hours a certain department is spending on events or break it down by the customer, how, many, how much time are you spending working with a specific customer? All of that type of stuff is, is possible in your reporting over in, in Explore. Okay, so the last part of the app that I wanted to cover in this demo today is uh, around workflows. So being able to see the event is really good, but what about when something relative to the event happens? Maybe you want a reminder that gets sent out through Zendesk or to bump the ticket from an on hold status to an open status. Uh, you can do that using workflows. And this is another part of the app that you'll see here. And as you can see, we do have a few in here already. Now the event start and event end workflows are kind of locked into the app. You are not able to delete these or edit these. Um, and what they do is that at the start of the event, the ticket gets automatically tagged with event started. And when an event ends, it automatically gets tagged with event ended. But you can create other tags that get added relative to events. Uh, like this one over here that's getting added 60 minutes before the event starts. So to create an, your own workflow, just click on add workflow here. And we're going to call this one a 10 min reminder, a reminder like so. And you can choose when this um, uh, gets added uh, from this drop down. So we're just choosing 10 minutes before the event starts. And here's where you define your tag. So the tag should be something unique uh, that's not like any other tag, to, you know, and, and appropriate to the workflow that you're creating. So 10 minute reminder would seem appropriate. Now, the reason why we have a tag added to the ticket is that it's incredibly powerful um, because it taps into Zendesk triggers. Zendesk triggers are the engine of Zendesk. So you can create a Zendesk trigger to say when a ticket is tagged with X, then perform basically any action you can think of. And I'll show you how that works in a sec. Now, um, lastly, you can choose a pop-up message that shows at the top right-hand side of the screen when this workflow takes place as well. And if you don't want to see the pop-up message and you just want to create the workflow through triggers, uh, you can just delete it like so and click OK to create the little workflow that we've got going here. Now, I mentioned before that the tags do tap into Zendesk trigger functionality. And rather than having to go away and build your own trigger, we created a little shortcut here so you can uh, just create one instantly. And if I pop over into that trigger that we just created here now, we'll be able to see what it does. So under the conditions, we're just checking for when a ticket contains at least one of the following ta uh, tags, uh, which is 10 minute reminder, the one that we just created. And then under actions, we've uh, set it to uh, email the assigned group that this is your 10 minute reminder. Um, we can kind of put in a little bit of a, an email body there if we want to. But this is just an example of something that you can do when this workflow hits. You can really do anything you like. Um, you can create hundreds of different actions based on all the different parts of uh, you know what just triggers allows you to do. You can say, change the status to open. You can set the priority to high. You could send a Slack message. You could even uh, send a, a message through to our Notify app to pop up it into your notification feed up here. Um, it's up to you with what action you want to perform based on the workflow that you're setting. But uh, yeah. That, that's uh, essentially what the workflows part of the app does. It taps into triggers. Uh, if you're not familiar with triggers, you should definitely look into triggers. They are the engine of Zendesk and, and extremely useful for many, many types of things that you're going to be wanting to set up. But uh, yeah, that's workflows. So uh, that pretty much covers uh, everything that I wanted to talk about uh, in today's demonstration. Uh, thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, be sure to email us at support at sweethawk.co.